too. Perfect timing. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Oh, okay. the live. Okay. Yes. Okay. Your topic one. Yes. Okay. I can always maybe. I'm gonna introduce myself and then her. So we'll wait till you get live. Okay. We're living. We're kind of made live of work. We're living. I could have just said living, but you know, living is just so much more fun. Okay. It's like driving. Right. It's living. I like living. If you want to, sure, you know. Okay. Hello, internet. Gee, I wish I'd thought of that. Okay, because I was like over here. Okay, I wish I'd thought of that. Anyway. Hey, folks. Hey, in person, people online. Good to see y'all. I'm teacher in training Charlie Reap, bringing the message today. Pronouns. When we, uh, pronouns they them. Thank you. Yep. Um, bringing today's message of when we have no one else, we have each other. So before we get started, let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for allowing us to gather in this space. Thank you for the people who are here, for the people who are online, and for the people who will be watching this later. I pray that you would give me the words to say, that you would um, convey your message to anyone who needs to hear it, and that you would be present in this place with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, so, I'm going to be real with y'all. I don't know what that was. <laughs> it's fine. It's just a case, but just keep okay. going. Okay. Um, so I'm going to be real with y'all. Um, these past few months have not been easy. Um, they've, you know, between political circumstances and personal ones, I've had to come to terms with the fact that people just don't care about anything or anyone besides themselves. Um, Human nature. Yeah, but, you know, because of this, the world's felt hostile, and I've just kind of wanted to hide from it. But... The title of this message actually comes from being in the midst of one of these depressive episodes. Um, and this is something that I wondered if the first apostles had to remind themselves of when they were dealing with persecution from all sides. Hmm. Hmm. So, um, the verse we'll be reading from today is Acts 2, 40 through, 42 through 47. I will be reading from the screen um, from the NIV 2011. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Hmm. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Hmm. Now, the early church in the book of Acts is one of the best biblical examples, in my opinion, of a community that was there for each other in difficult times. So today, I'd like us to explore the world of the first century to give us some context and hmm. then discuss what we can learn from the early church. Hmm. So in true teacher fashion, I have prepared an educational, historical, geographical slideshow. Yes. So... What was life like in the first century AD? So the book of Acts talks about how it, how the early church was formed. Now being 2,000 years and a whole continent removed from these people makes it kind of tough for us to understand why their existence was so revolutionary. Mm -hmm. So let's dive into the culture. So Israel and much of the Mediterranean were in the grips of the Roman Empire in the first century. Mm -hmm. See, all of my you know Latin history is paying off, all six semesters of it. So, according to the Roman Empire in the first century, which is a PBS series, life in this advanced civilization wasn't always so civilized. Rulers often abused their power, and religious tolerance often resulted in violence. Sound familiar? Hmm. Uh, in 66 AD, the early church found itself in the middle of a civil war. A rebellion against Rome had started in Jerusalem in June. Hmm. By the time the Roman Empire regained control in September of 70 AD, thousands of Jews had died, and the temple in Jerusalem had been destroyed. To make matters worse, hostility was coming from both sides. 
Secular rulers and religious authorities were making life difficult for the early church. So I want to talk about three key players real quick before we go into the rest. Um, so one of the major persecutors of Christians in the first century was Caligula. Um, the emperor of Rome from 37 to 41 AD, he had a short but violent reign. And if you'll see, he didn't really live long either. Like maybe, I don't want to do the math on that. Uh, is that? 29, I think. 20, 29, yeah, it was younger than yeah. I thought. Um, so he's most known for mocking the Jews for their beliefs, even commissioning a statue of himself to put in the temple in Jerusalem. I see that face. <laughs> However, he was murdered before the statue could be built. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, God works all things. <laughs> <laughs> Hand to God in all situations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So um, the next person, we all know this guy. Our favorite, Emperor Nero. Again, he didn't, he didn't live very long either. You know, that's probably 31. 34. Oh, wait, no. I was looking at the wrong thing. My goodness, so him, between him and Caligula, they were like only in their... In their yeah, 31. Yeah, youngins. Um, another emperor of Rome, this one from 54 to 68 AD, uh, he was infamous for murdering innocent people. Um, you might know of him after he made the Christians a scapegoat during the Great Fire of Rome in 64 AD. Um, his death and the resulting power vacuum inside of the Civil War. Hmm. And now this one uh, might come as a surprise to some of y'all that he, he's included on this list, but again, Saul of Tarsus, major per persecutor before he became the Apostle Paul. Mm -hmm. Now he lived, eh, exact dates unknown, but like he lived, you know, double the age of those other two guys. Mm -hmm. um, so before he became the Apostle Paul, Saul was a devout Jew who made it his life's mission to persecute Christians. He imprisoned many of them, and if they were facing execution, voted to put them to death. What you looking at? The picture. Oh, yeah, I yeah, tried to find... Yeah, just looking um, at the picture, like, that looks like a mugshot. Yeah, no, I tried to find reconstruction so yeah. to give us more of a... Yeah. What do these guys actually look like? Mm -hmm. um, so, side note, I'm going to go into some more of the educational mm -hmm. resources. Um, online, if you want to join our Discord and see some of these, it's really hard to see the screen, but um, I recommend the Holman Quick Source Bible Atlas, which is where I pulled a lot of my information from. Um, although it's not available through at least the Charlotte Mecklenburg local library system, similar ones are in ebook format, which are free to use online, which has been very nice. Um, but if you don't live in the Charlotte area, definitely check your public library system, see what they have. Mm -hmm. um, so I've highlighted three resources on the screen worth looking into if you want to learn more. Um, for general history, overly sarcastic productions on YouTube. They have a ton of informative but also entertaining videos. I have watched so many about the Roman Empire. Um, if you want to learn about church history specifically, Apostle uh, Leanne has written several books on the subject. I've highlighted early church history, New Testament times to 700 AD. Mm -hmm. Now that one's available on Amazon. The Kindle edition is about $7. Mm -hmm. And then, like I said before, the geography portion, Holman Quick Source Bible Atlas, again, is a really good one. Um, that one's also available on Kindle for about six dollars. Let's see. Okay, now to the second topic: What can we learn from the early church? Now, while Christians in the first century may have been dealing with different issues, we can empathize with them because our circumstances are similar. And if we're feeling afraid and alone in a hostile world, uh, the early church must have felt like that too. Now for some encouragement: In the midst of a hostile world early church came together to become a true community. Mm -hmm. They didn't put up walls to get disengaged from the world. They built longer tables to engage with people who were hurting. Mm -hmm. Now, again, Acts 2, 42 through 47 shows us what made the early church so unique. One, they were united by their spiritual experiences, hence why you were all up in my sermon today. <laughs> Two, they met each other's needs. And three, they spent quality time together. For our first point, they were united by, united by spiritual experiences. And I'm pulling from Acts 2, 43 from this. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. Hmm. Now, I grew up believing that God only performed miracles in Bible times. Granted, I was also raised Southern Baptist, where spiritual gifts were considered either irrelevant or just non-existent. My eyes, of course, have since been open to see that signs and wonders still happen today, and that they can be grand miracles or everyday spiritual circumstances. 
So notice that spiritual experiences are only a small part of Christian community life in this passage. This is only one verse out of six. So yes, the early church saw some miraculous things, but their care and community to their care and commitment to each other was what really kept them together when life got rough. Mm-hmm. Point number two, they met each other's needs. I'm pulling from verses 44 and 45. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Now, early Christians could have turned to the government for help. After all, the Roman Empire had a welfare system known as bread and circuses. Their version of welfare uh, let the working class have access to free grain and free entertainment. In other words, chariot races and gladiator fights. Mm -hmm. But the early church did more than the government could. They knew what the members of their community needed and were willing to give something up to meet those needs. You know, notice that they sold property and possessions. So they didn't just give, like, what was left. Mm -hmm. More than that, they met people's needs for companionship and fellowship. Mm -hmm. And again, you were all up in my sermon a little bit towards the end here. So third and most importantly, they spent quality time together. I'm reading from verses 46 through 47. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with loud and sincere hearts praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Mm -hmm. In the 21st century in America, many Christians think of church as just something to do on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. Some people go to a Bible study or life group during the week. Mm -hmm. But the early church met daily. You can do that. And more than just meeting to worship God, they gathered in different homes and shared meals together, Mm -hmm. like a family. Mm -hmm. So no wonder the Lord added to their number daily. Mm -hmm. Having a support system, a found family, Mm -hmm. made it easier to ride out the difficult times and exist in a hostile world. Mm -hmm. So I want us to imagine what our lives would be like if we actually modeled the early church of Acts. You know, our church buildings wouldn't sit empty most of the week. Mm -hmm. They would be bustling community centers, with people from all walks of life coming together because of their love for God and each other. Maybe we'd have more home churches and close-knit small groups Mm -hmm. where people would feel safe, and I mean really safe connecting with others and talking openly about their struggles. Mm -hmm. And maybe we'd be so committed to one another that no one around us would feel alone. So to close, I want to encourage us to model the early Church of Acts. We don't have to do things like we've always been doing. Mm. If anything, the Book of Acts has shown us that the church isn't a building, or a social club, or a bubble to shield us from the outside world. The church is a community of believers united by their experiences with Christ and their commitment to each other. As a result, this community can withstand whatever life and the enemy throws at it. And in a world that feels hostile, Christians and non-Christians alike need a safe space to support each other. Hmm. Any questions? I wish it was longer, but it was good. (laughs) Thank you. Mm -hmm. Online, feel free to leave some comments. We'll Mm -hmm. uh, get to them. We'll be able to see them afterwards.